Welcome to Let's Curate's webcast collaborative series of the Independent Artisans. Today, our guest is Diane Conroy. Um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how would you describe your art? Oh, hi, everybody. Um, yeah, look, my art um, has evolved over the years. I've always been in art and I've had a business in Tokyo and Singapore. Um, now I'm living in Brisbane and I learned a skill when I was in Japan um, called needle felting. And I studied with a lot of artists up there that were doing the work. And then I've kind of just had it as a hobby while I was doing my other art business. But since I've come back to Australia, um, I decided to take it on. The business kind of evolved from lots of people wanting me to make my art for them. So now I have a business in um, needle filting, um, huge big pieces of art. I do all sorts of animals for interior design, but I also have a, a business um, doing little dogs. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Um, what would you say is your biggest accomplishment? So my biggest accomplishment, I would think, is uh well recently i would say is that i got chosen from the the city council here in my um where i live to um be the head artist in a big exhibition in november Ooh. so i thought that was pretty big because there was lots and lots of um entries to this and um so i'm going to be making about 40 dogs for them and it's going to do with COVID. And the essay that I had to write to accompany the artwork was on um, connection and community during the lockdown. So I thought the dogs um, brought a lot of people together because here in, in my city, we were allowed to actually go out and walk. So there was a lot of people walking, a lot of dogs out and people were connecting that way. So um, I'm quite excited about that exhibition. Yeah, and that I won it. Hmm. Congratulations. Thanks. Um, What's your future goals for your art? Well, I've started thinking a lot. Of, I've been working with the RSPCA here in Australia. Um, their head office is in my city, Brisbane, and um, with homeless dogs. And also I'm moving into homeless people now. So um, I've got, I've just entered a competition in Sydney um, and the theme behind my work is about homeless people. So I'm also a social worker. I was trained as a social worker many years ago. So my dogs have got to do with people going through grief with their dogs. So I want to move more into that area. A lot of people buy my dogs because their dog has passed and then they come to get them or we talk on the phone or whatever and I end up counselling them through, you know, the grief of their dog and hoping that my little replica of their dog will help them through their grief. So I think that my work is moving a lot towards um, helping people with grief and I want to get into the little bit of, you know, dogs are home homeless, people are homeless, dogs end up in beautiful, forever loving homes. Homeless people very rarely would end up in a beautiful situation where they're pampered and have everything bought for them. So I want to kind of connect my art with homelessness and yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Mm. Uh, um, how has COVID affected the art industry? Well, I actually think it's given it a bit of a boost. For one, people have had time to sit at home on Instagram and Facebook and have lots of different art popping up that they don't normally have time to go and look at the website. I've had a lot more website visits. I didn't think that I would sell that much once COVID hit, but actually my sales have not if anything they're better so and I'm hoping that other artists have had that experience as well with COVID that and and I also feel like people are more interested in buying local made or handmade um, there's been a huge push here in Australia at least with um, buying local people's work and supporting that really small the smaller industries which obviously artists come under so I think that COVID has been quite positive for artists 
from what I can see and from friends that I have in the in the industry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what should we be expecting from you in the near future? Yeah, possibly what I was saying, moving into a lot more one-off pieces that um, that I'll be putting in competitions. Um, so on my Instagram page, following, I've had this thing recently where you follow a design of mine. I've got another one going here at the moment for the big Etsy art show um, at the end of the year. I've got another piece of art um, I'm working on for the Sydney Dog Lovers Show, which attracts like 60,000 people that I'm working on. Um, so a lot more one-offs as opposed to you know, making 30 or 40 pugs, you know, in, in kind of a couple of months, I want to do more really one-off projects and people can commission me for that as well. Yeah. So in the future, I think that, you know, um, that's where I'll be headed to a lot more, uh, just one-off pro, um, projects rather than mm, doing a lot of the same work. Yeah. Um, any final words to uh, to the artists? Um, yeah, get your 10,000 hours up, you know, like I've been working on this for 20 years. It takes a long time to, to master a particular work. So if you're still in that 10,000 hours, keep going because you get better and better. And, and one, you'll know when you get to that mark where you know, people are going, you're amazing. And um, some people actually can hit it straight up. But a lot of artists need to put in the hours. Just, and give away, give away a lot of product. I give away a lot of my art and I still do to this day. And I run competitions, not always for, um, you know, to get my name out there, but I run them because I actually want to give away my art. And um, that, that helps. That that really helps because people will put that on their Facebook page and and you'll get a lot of art through being giving. So that's what I'd say to emerging artists is that keep going, get your ten thousand hours in and and give away. Give away your samples instead of having them sit around your studio. I used to have lots of, you know, art sitting around and then I started giving it away through different things on on social media i go to the children hospital and give away 10 dogs to the children that were sick and and a lot of good comes from good yeah oh well thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to come speak with us um this webcast will be available on our youtube page um and also please don't forget to follow us on instagram at uh let's underscore curate and facebook at discover let's curate signing off until next time thank you thank you bye bye